All right, this is the third and final part of our lesson on solving and graphing polynomial inequalities. The first step is to put this in standard form. So we're going to want to move everything over to the left. So I will add 2x squared to both sides. Okay, these are like terms. And I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And these are like terms. So that's going to give us x to the fourth power plus 3x squared plus 2 um, is less than 0. Okay, so um, we need to find the zeros of this function and uh, see what we're dealing with. Um, so let's, let's try factoring this. I'm noticing that it's a trinomial um, so there's a chance that this can be factored. So um, when I look at x to the fourth power, I know that that can factor as x squared and x squared. Right? When I look at 2, um, I know that that can be 1 times 2. Okay? Now, you know that um, inner plus outer has to give you the middle. So right now, inner, I have 1x squared. And outer, I have 2x squared. All right, the middle that we're shooting for is positive 3x squared. So um, I can get that. If both of these are positive, that'll make positive 3x squared. So that would mean both of these are positive. And that gives me the correct sign on the 2. Positive 1 times positive 2 is positive 2. So this is a correct factorization. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and set these equal to zero. Okay, if I do that, then I've got x squared plus one is equal to zero. And I've got x squared plus two is equal to zero. Okay, um, so that's going to give me, you know, subtracting one from both sides gives me x squared equals negative one. Subtracting 2 from both sides gives me x squared equals negative 2. Hmm, this is looking very strange indeed. Um, you know, we're going to take the square root of both sides, but you see how we have a negative under the radical there? Um, I might as well do the same thing here. Square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. Okay. Um, the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is plus or minus i. Okay? Um, so those are imaginary. So you can't plot that on the x-axis. So no zeros there. Um, none that we can use. Um, you know, no x-intercepts. So um, this one is the same type of problem. Again, we have a negative under the radical. So that's plus or minus i radical 2. So look, all of the solutions are imaginary. That means there are no real solutions. So there are no x-intercepts. Um, so, so there, there are no x-intercepts. Okay, All the zeros are imaginary. Um, now, that's because we must be in that situation where um, you know, if this is the x-axis, okay, um, imagine that this is the x-axis. This is a chordic graph, all right? It's going to have that kind of a W shape. This must be one of those situations where the graph does not cross the x-axis at all, okay? So, um, it's just a matter of, is the entire graph above the x-axis? Or is the entire graph below the x-axis? OK, um, it's going to be one of these situations. Because remember, this is an inequality. We want to know where the function is less than 0. If the whole function is below the x-axis, then we'll, we'll have all real numbers, right? Negative infinity to positive infinity will be the solution. OK, but if it's above the graph, then we'll have no solution. So how can we figure that out? How can we figure out whether it's above the graph or below the graph? Um, well, 
one way is just to understand that, um, see how we have a, uh, a positive leading coefficient. Um, that means it's an upward facing parabola. I mean, well, it's not a parabola, but an upward facing graph. So if, if, uh, if there are no x-intercepts, you know, because of all these imaginary zeros, it must be that the entire graph is above the x-axis, okay? So no part of the graph is below zero. So that means we're going to have no solution. So as far as the final answer, it's just going to be no solution. Okay, another thing you can do if you weren't 100% comfortable with what I just said, um, you could put this into your calculator and see if the values are negative or positive. So um, x to the fourth power plus 3x squared plus 2. Okay, type it into your table feature and then take a look. Okay, so notice that these values are positive. And as I scroll down, positive, 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 still positive. Okay, I thought I saw a flash of something. So it got down as low as 2. 2 was the lowest it went. And then it started going back up again. All right? At no time did it go negative. So all of these values are positive. So that goes along with what uh, we were saying. Okay? Um, one last thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Wolfram Alpha to just uh, take a look at what's actually going on. Okay, so here I've typed it into Wolfram Alpha. Let's see what we have. It's still thinking. Okay. All right, so it looks like a parabola. It's not really a parabola, um, but as you can see, there are no x-intercepts, okay? And you can see our solutions, just like what we came up with, uh, positive and negative i, positive and negative i radical 2, all right? All imaginary, but there are no solutions. Um, so in terms of where the graph is greater than 0, the uh, I mean, where the graph is, I'm sorry, less than 0, no part of this graph is less than zero. The entire graph is above the x-axis. So that's why we say no solution. Okay, um, last one. Let's go ahead and do number six. Give an example of a polynomial where uh, the solution would be negative infinity to two and three to five. Okay. Um, let's sketch a graph of this solution and work our way backwards. All right, so let's start with our number line. Okay, so I see 2, 3, and 5 is what we're dealing with. Okay, so let's start there. So we have a 2, we have a 3, and we have a 5. Okay, um, the main thing that tells me is that uh, these are the zeros of, of the function, okay? So, um, zeros. So the zeros are 2, 3, and 5. Okay, that's the main thing that that tells me. Um, okay, so what else? See how these are round? So, by the way, I know that those are open circles. So I'm going to have an open circle here. And uh, I want to have uh, solutions going to negative infinity. And then from 3 to 5, okay, open circles, open circles. Okay. So these are the solutions, but these are definitely the zeros. So look, um, if these are the zeros, then that means the factors, we need factors of um, x minus 2, x minus 3, and x minus 5. Okay, these are the factors. Okay, so um, this is a cubic, all right, so far. x times x times x. So um, let's see if we can get this done with a cubic. Now, um, we need it, to, okay, 
So for example, let's see, if I draw a cubic that has these x-intercepts, okay, here, here, and here. All right, let's see what we're talking about. You know what, let me do this in purple. You know, I'm going to use brown. Okay, so here's a cubic, you know, one of those N-shaped graphs. Okay, now let's highlight the part, uh, the parts uh, that go with these solution sets. Okay, um, let's highlight them. Um, I will use the pink. So look, I need this part to be highlighted, okay? I need uh, solutions to be from two and to the left. So that would be like from here in this situation, okay? And then I have more s solutions between three and five, so that would be from here to here, okay? Now the reason why that, that was important, um, the reason why that was important is because um, we need to know, are we supposed to be doing above the x-axis or below? So if, uh, if these are the areas of the graph that we need, okay, this will be below the x-axis. So in other words, we're talking about less than zero. Okay, so by the way, um, less than zero, not equal to, uh, because of the round parentheses, open circles, all right, no equal to, all right, so less than zero would give me these parts below the graph, which match the uh, solutions uh, that we were given from the beginning, okay, so that, that lets me know that um, I'm dealing with less than zero, uh, so that's really it, um, they didn't tell us that we had to multiply this out, so um, we can just write this as the answer, okay? Um, this would satisfy the problem, so x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 5. So this could be our answer. x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 5 is less than 0. Okay, that would be our answer to number 6. That's one possible answer. Um, there are others but this would work. All right, I hope this was helpful. I will see you on the next video.